to find me. Okay, so Vanessa says the coordinate. So listen, there's all kinds of things that people do to identify land that causes all kinds of problems. So they use addresses, they use APNs, they use some funky coordinate thing they got off of Google Earth. Okay, and all of those things cause problems. We're not going to talk about it today. But so they came up with a system to uniquely describe land, and that is a land surveyor writes a proper written. Land description. Well, that was just a, that was a trick question. No. Okay, no. but okay, <laughs> but, okay. So, but why now under California law, only land surveyors and people that work at utility companies, which is stupid, but only land surveyors are allowed to write land descriptions. Why? Because it's really yeah. hard to what? To uniquely what? Yes, yeah. Vanessa. Yes, it's really it hard. Identifies the land lines anyway. It's really hard. Danny, how hard is it to uniquely define, de describe land and not screw it up? Pretty hard. Pretty hard. So we only let land surveyors do it, and you have to practice that for years. Give me an example of what you would describe this land as. Okay, so this land, this this where we sit right here, this uh -huh. is block fifty-two of subdivision map X, filed in book and page San Joaquin County records. Now, yeah. that's easier today because. We don't let you create parcels by deed anymore in California. You have to do a map. Danny, why did we start? We've been making people do maps since, like, I don't know. Why would you, how would you be able to make a parcel by deed? So I could sell you. So here's how it used to go back in England. I'd say, I sell to Vanessa the following described piece of land. Starting at the intersection of Douglas Creek with Three Cow Road. Then it's along the road to the corner of Bob's Barn. Then from Bob's barn down the cow path to the edge of Bob's meadow, then around Bob's meadow back to the creek. That's a meat, that's a bounds deed. Okay? The problem is it's really easy to screw that stuff up. We still do it today. Okay, but a long time ago in California, they said, we're not letting you do it by deed anymore. You guys keep screwing it up. You have to do a map. Like you have to do a picture. Okay, but even with a picture, we still screw it up all the time. Okay, so look, it just it's really hard to uniquely identify land. Because it's hard to tell where does one guy's land start and another guy's land stop. That's just fundamentally hard. It's so hard that even with the maps, we still put what in the ground to try and help? Monuments. Markers. Yeah, we still put markers in the ground. Okay, so it's hard to uniquely identify land, and it's hard to determine where one piece of land starts and ends. It's just a fundamentally difficult problem. That is why land surveyors exist, period. We exist to uniquely describe, identify, and mark on the ground people's properties, period. Okay? Okay, so the paper title system in the United States only works if you have a land surveyor who takes that paper title and does what with it? Makes a map. Makes a map and ultimately can mark those lines where? On the ground. Yeah, because people don't really care. If I give Danny a piece of paper that shows where his land is, that doesn't help him. If he's trying to build something, what does he need to know? Where those lines are. Where are those lines on the ground? That is what a land, that is fundamentally the value that a land surveyor provides, period. Okay? Now, if you're in a system based on occupation, like the Roman system, that's not as important because you don't have to worry about what the paper title says. What you worry about is where's the fence? Because it's a system based on physical occupation. To some extent, it's easier. Okay? We don't like... It's easier if, if, if you just base it on where the fence or the wall is. We don't like that as much because that makes it easier for people to steal land that isn't theirs. That's why we make you have a paper title system. Okay? So, let's talk about these three kinds of deeds. Patent, that's a deed from the government. A grant deed or a warranty deed is a deed that I give you and I guarantee you that I'm selling you the property. Okay? So, Danny, I'm going to grant you this this house and the property it's on, and I guarantee you that I own it. If somebody else comes back to, and says, Danny, that, that's not your house, I owned it, not Landon, I have a legal obligation to defend Danny. Okay, so under a grant deed. This is the most typical kind of deed. Okay, a quick claim deed is typically used to clean up problems. Okay, and a quick claim deed is 
whatever interest I own in this property, Vanessa, I give it to you. I'm not going to guarantee you that I own anything, but if I own something, I give it to you. Okay, so let me give you an example. Let's say there's two neighbors. So Vanessa's like, even be allowed? Vanessa's like, you're crazy. I'm going to tell you why. So let's say there's two neighbors side by side, A and B. Okay, and they've got some overlap in their deeds. So this is overlap. Okay, but the fence has always been right here. Okay, so Vanessa, you can quick claim to me the piece beyond the fence. Do, do I have to then acquire taxes for that piece? No. You're probably paying taxes on it. Don't, don't worry about I taxes. Should, right? don't, don't worry about taxes. Here's the point. If there's some confusion about this piece of land right here, you don't want to guarantee me that you own it, but you'll sell me whatever right you have in it. Because that that's, doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, can you think of a better way to explain this? I'm just saying because, like, if you're telling me that the person's not okay. 100% own it, I'll give you an example. I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Okay, I'll, I'll try another mm -hmm. example. So Monique and I bought this house together, right? Okay, and I die in a car wreck tomorrow. I hate when you bring that up. Okay? I know. So, she's going to sell Danny my house, okay, and I'm dead. Okay? But Danny says, hey, I want to make sure that none of that, and I've only got, let's say I've got one nephew. I've only got one nephew. Okay? In fact, I do only have one blood nephew. Sandra lives in Alaska. Danny says, hey, I know Leanna died in that car wreck, but I want to make sure that his nephew doesn't come and make a claim against this property because who's he getting the deed from? He's getting the deed from Monique. But he wants to make sure that my nephew doesn't come and make a claim against this property after he buys it. So he tells Monique, hey, I'll buy your house, but you got to get a quick claim deed from Samuel that says whatever interest he has in the property, he gives to me. Okay, my question, why would, why would your nephew have any rights? Because he's my heir. So are we talking in back in the day? That wouldn't happen now. It could, it could in theory, yes, it could. Now, under our legal system, because of the way Monique and I own the house as married a married couple, it wouldn't. But it could. Do you understand how if I die and I've got an heir and my wife sells this house, that heir could come and potentially make a claim against Danny? Because he could say, hey, Monique didn't have a right to sell my, let's say I've got a will that says on my death, my nephew gets my share of the house. Okay, yeah, that's different. Okay, all right, so. Let's say the let's say the will signed but not notarized. And Monique, so and, and Monique says, and, but I so well hold on. This is what happens in real life. So I send a copy of my will to my nephew, signed but not notarized, yeah, yeah, and I never right. tell my wife because I'm having an affair. Okay. All right. I die in a car accident. Okay. She sells the house to Danny. And my nephew tells calls Danny up and says, Hey, half of that's mine. She can't sell you my half. And Danny says, what are you talking about? Right? Okay, and then Danny calls his attorney, and Danny's attorney says, hey, you know what? That will's probably no good, but just to be safe, you need to get a quick claim deed from Samuel. Okay? So Danny calls Samuel and says, hey, look, I don't want problems. How much to get a quick claim deed from you? And Samuel says, two grand. Danny says, all right, I'll send you a check for $2,000 to me a quick claim deed. Okay, okay quick claim deed is just a way to give somebody whatever just interest you might have in the property. It just cleans it, 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 just cleans it up. Okay. Just cleans it up. Okay? Yeah. No, that's the lawyer does that usually. Quick claim deed. Okay? So here's here's what I want you to remember. If you see quick claim deed, that's like a big red, big red flag we're waving because that means somebody's selling something they don't want to guarantee they own. Okay? It's okay sometimes, but it should make you nervous. Okay? And how can we deal with that? Sometimes we recommend a client get a quick claim deed from a neighbor to clean up potential problems. There's reasons to do it. Mm -hmm. But if somebody wants to sell you a house with a quick claim deed, be very afraid. They should be willing to give you a what? A grant. A grant deed. Okay, now, I'm going to tell you why a grant deed is not even good enough. And this is why we have title insurance. Okay, so I'm going to explain. All right. So the patent deed, is that just land that's never been owned by a private? Yes. It's just straight Isn't from the government? That, yes. Isn't right. that 